Consumer Product Safety Commission announced a recall of more than 500,000 beds from the company Home Design. Look at your screen. These are the ones. These beds are sold at stores like Walmart and Wayfair. The CPSC says they collapse or break while they're being used with reports of more than 100 incidents of collapsing beds and dozens of people getting hurt. Users can contact Home Design for a free replacement. All right, now to a recall that we have brought up before, but this time salmonella cases, they've doubled since the first warning we brought you. The CDC continuing to alert consumers about what you see on your screen right here. This is the charcuterie meat trays from Sam's and Costco. The brands are Bassetto and Fratelli Barata. Check your fridge, throw out the meats, or contact the store about a refund. We have a lot more information about this recall on our website. Just look for the article, front page of KSAT.com. Mm. Oh, scary stuff. Lots of charcuterie meats oh, in my yeah. fridge. <laughs> Time now. You gotta check that. Yeah. Time now, 857, 28 degrees. Ahead in our next half hour, are you feeling burnt out from work? We have some tips. Don't on... answer that question. <laughs> I looked right at Max <laughs> on how to feel like yourself again. And we're live at O'Connor High School, Northside ISD. This is awesome. They're yeah. kicking off their week-long livestock show just in time for the rodeo season. So many scholarships raised by the livestock show here in Bear County. Taking a look at 10 and 1604, which is going to be closed until 5 a.m. Monday morning. For all those alternate routes, head to ksat.com. We'll be right back. Good morning, welcome back, and happy weekend. Starting off with a live look out at the Alamo City. Yes, it is under 30 degrees right now, but the sun is up. It's going to get a little warmer, and rain could be on the way. We're going to check in with Mia Montgomery in just a few moments. For now, good morning, 9 o'clock this Saturday. It is January 20th. Good Thank morning. Thank you so much for starting your weekend with us. And yes, we are literally freezing right now. We are. However, it's going to get warmer. The plants, they're going to live, hopefully. Yeah, they looked great. Okay, been big win. under the coverings, and you can probably take them off today. Um, okay. And make sure you want to take them off at least by tomorrow because we're going to get tons of rain, according to Mia. And Mia, that's going to help a lot of our plants that, you know, may have died back come back in the spring. Yeah, I'm sure. Great advice there. So yes, it is very, very cold this morning and overall this weekend is still going to be on the chilly side, but we will start to warm things up next week and that also comes with increasing rain chances. So let's talk all about it. I do want to get you a look at those current temperatures outside because if you are about to step out for any early Saturday morning plans, this is what you're going to be greeted with when you do step outdoors. Very, very cold. We are still below freezing and in around the San Antonio area. We have warmed up a few degrees degrees here in town. 30 officially. It's 27 in Bulverde, 31 in Hondo, 25 in Kerrville, currently 27 in Bernie. But here's the thing. We still do have a bit of a leftover breeze in place. Winds coming in from the northeast at about 5 to 15 miles per hour. So in some of those breezier spots, wind chills are in the 20s. So you're definitely going to want to layer up and bundle up. And even into this afternoon, yes, we will warm into the mid 40s, but all things considered, it still will be a chilly day. We've got the sun shine in place right now that continues throughout the later portions of this morning, but into the afternoon we are expecting increasing cloud cover from west to east and what that's going to do is signal bigger changes on the way by tomorrow. Tomorrow's still going to be cold. We may struggle to climb out of the 30s into the afternoon, but that's because of the cloud cover and the increasing rain chances throughout the day. So by tomorrow night and into early Monday morning, we are expecting widespread rain, a few thunderstorms and some pockets of heavier rain. That's going to continue into the Monday morning drive time. So just thinking ahead, probably a good idea to grab the umbrella and give yourself some extra time out the door into next week. The rain chances don't stop there. Scattered rain chances through at least Wednesday and those warmer temperatures. So we're going to get you a full look at that forecast. What all you can expect in the days ahead. A lot of info coming your way in just a few guys. Thank you, Mia. Well, since the horrific school shooting at Robb Elementary 20 months ago, families of the victims, they've been wanting to keep and hold officials accountable. And Friday, the Uvalde County District Attorney convened a special grand jury to go over her investigative materials. As Lee Waldman explains, it is a rarely used tactic, but it is a tactic that the criminal defense attorney believes could be a good tool. After repeated calls Thursday. Do your job. What else does she possibly need to prosecute? Uvalde County District Attorney Christina Mitchell making a big step Friday 
convening a special grand jury to examine the Robb Elementary School shooting investigation. The news first reported by the Uvalde Leader News. So what that should help. Criminal defense attorney Brent De La Paz says calling for a special grand jury is a unique move. A special grand jury has this specific purpose of looking at one particular issue, one particular case. A dozen people from the community will serve on the special grand jury, going over the investigation that the Texas Rangers handed over to Mitchell. KSAT has learned through a joint lawsuit with other media organizations against the Texas Department of Public Safety, the investigative material is 2.8 terabytes of data. And the whole purpose is for them to look at everything instead of one thing in a vacuum. Now they have uh, an array of information that they can pour over. The special grand jury can subpoena witnesses, compel evidence, and most importantly, ask questions about charges that could be brought. Child endangerment. Do you think that would be a fair charge to present to a special grand jury or grand jury? And Everything is, is going to be on the table. And I think if a special grand juror were to ask that exam, exact same question, I think that's a fair question to ask. Child endangerment is a felony charge in Texas. It has a statute of limitations of five years or 10 years after the victim's 18th birthday. The special grand jury proceedings are expected to last at least six months. Then they'll hand over their recommendations to the DA. From there, Mitchell can sit a regular grand jury and pursue criminal charges if she chooses. They can then use that information to start asking those questions, to start trying to find out what is a reasonable charge to bring and against whom. Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. Well, local law enforcement agencies and training academies, they are closely examining the recommendations from the Department of Justice report. So there were nearly 300 recommendations in it that would impact law enforcement and emergency responders. Michael Davis and the instructor with the Alamo Area Regional Law Enforcement Academy says every first responding agency should immediately read this DOJ report and then, number one, work on a strategic communication plan that includes surrounding agencies. Two, look at the updated, look at and update their policies and three, practice their emergency plans. Having that mindset of it'll never happen here or it has, hasn't happened here is the wrong mindset to have. Our goal is to be prepared. You need to know that it works when you need it and you need to know that your people are trained to do it and we have to have the commitment to serve our community. His questions to law enforcement leaders is when was the last time you practiced and trained? Davis says there should also be a plan to help communities heal. Your morning headlines, students at Lincoln University in Missouri, they're demanding answers from school leaders after a well-known administrator died by suicide last week. Ongoing protest at the HBCU comes after an email was allegedly sent to alumni, faculty and staff by the administrator before she died. The email alleges accusations against the university's president of bullying and harassment. Lincoln University students were able to attend a public meeting with school leaders to get some of their questions answered. Some students described the meeting as frustrating. A lot of no comment. We can't answer that question. I believe it was really only one question that they answered was like the characteristics. What characteristics do they see um, in a president? More so currently, Lincoln University President Dr. John Mosley, they are on paid administrative leave. University officials plan to hire a third party expert to investigate these allegations that were made against Mosley. And police in Oklahoma have arrested four fraternity members in the case of a dead Longhorn. Remember that story that was placed outside an Oklahoma State University fraternity house. So all four were charged with unlawful removal and disposal of a carcass. That's a misdemeanor. The Longhorn was found December 1st, the eve of the Big 12 championship game in which OSU was playing against UT. Police believe a large party had happened the night before on a farm where the Longhorn had lived. Law enforcement learned through a report that the cow died of a disease and had not been killed. All four men have pled not guilty. For those looking to save a few cents on forever stamps, today is the last day to stock up before that price increase starts tomorrow. So it'll cost 68 cents to send a letter via snail mail. Right now, the price is 66 cents. Forever stamps, they're good forever, no matter when you buy them. They were just 41 cents when they first came out back in 2007. 
This marks the fifth price hike since 2021. The price of Priority Mail and Group Advantage, they're also going up more than 5%. The City of San Antonio Public Works Department has finished the Riverwalk draining and maintenance project earlier than expected. The announcement was made yesterday. This year's maintenance focused on the main channel from East Josephine to East Nueva Street. There was a removal of 46.58 tons of sediment and debris. Mm. Other items, items included, Max, scooters, yep. Yep. folding chairs, trash cans and sandbags. Sure, we've done that story before when they drudge the river and it is crazy. It's funny because you see all the crowds just to see what they can find. It's it's sad, but I'm glad they do it. I'm glad that it gets all picked up. Absolutely. All right. Big news for local Jaguar fans. Texas A&M University San Antonio revealing their new university mascot logo. Take a look at the screen. There we go. New Jaguar logo kicked off during their 15th anniversary celebration. According to a news release designed by Torch Creative, a studio based in Dallas, school leaders say the new logo reflects the students' strength, resilience, and determination for everything they do. Well, for months, FFA students in Northside ISD, they've been taking care of their animals, and now it's time to show them off. Today we're getting close to, we're getting to see their equipment projects, so let's take a live look. This is a live look at O'Connor High School. Today is a kickoff of the week-long showcase. Monday morning, students will show goats. Wednesday will be steers. And Thursday will be poultry. And it all leads up to auction happening a week from today. All right, an exciting time for so many students, so many families, obviously staff involved as well. We spoke with the student earlier this morning. The students have been building their own equipment to take care of their own animals. And I'm sure we've done extensive stories with Future Farmers of America. So right now what we're looking at, these aren't of course animals, those like we said mm -hmm. later this week. The equipment, right. well, have you seen any of their welding projects? It's amazing. Where they make like smokers and oh, barbecue yeah. pits, it's awesome. Yeah, we always have like one or two great grads who are big prominent leaders in FFA and they're so mature. So much more mature than I ever was. It is incredible. <laughs> All right, time now, just about 9-11. Hey, look at that, we're at 30 degrees. Mia, did you do FFA? What did you raise? So I didn't do animals, but I did like the milk and nice. all that. It was fun. It explains why M Mia is so mature. <laughs> <laughs> Always said Mia is the most mature out of anyone in the newsroom. <laughs> all right, Mia will have our forecast saying some rain on the way when we come back. Good morning, welcome back. And hey, we have officially cracked 30 degrees. Yay. Yay. Yeah, we dipped down into the upper 20s officially here in town. Some parts of the hill country, low 20s, so hard freeze as expected. Yeah. But we are warming into the 40s this afternoon. It's still going to be cold, all things considered, this weekend, uh, but we do have increasing rain chances as early as tomorrow. So here's a look at that weekend forecast. 45 is the forecast high here in town this afternoon, so still chilly, and we will see the cloud cover increase throughout the day. Near freezing in some locations tomorrow morning, and it's going to be a cold day tomorrow. We've got the cloud cover in place. Yes, Dan as well as we start to see some of that rain pop up on the radar and in some locations we may see highs struggle to climb out of the 30s. So that's going to be something to monitor for tomorrow. In terms of rain chances, we're going to call it about a 60% potential into Sunday afternoon. 80% chance widespread Sunday night and early Monday and still scattered rain chances continue Tuesday and into Wednesday of the upcoming week. So I want to talk all about it. You can see we are quiet and dry across South Central Texas right now. We do have some clouds the farther south that you go as we take a look farther off to the west though a different story across the western seaboard near san francisco as well as los angeles there's some scattered to widespread rain that's been able to get up and running this saturday morning that is all thanks to an area of low pressure a disturbance that's going to continue tracking eastward here over the next 36 hours by tomorrow it drops down into the desert southwest approaches the state of texas and out ahead of that disturbance we start to see some pockets of energy float across the Lone Star State. That combined with additional moisture, it's what's going to help spark up those rain chances for us here in the San Antonio area. So let's time that out on your future cast again, 5 p.m. today. 
dry, but we do have the cloud cover that increases by tomorrow morning in between about 7 to 9 a.m. A few sprinkles possible here in San Antonio, but where temperatures could dip down to or just below that 32 degree mark, it's possible we see a few pockets of light freezing rain in the hill country near Bandera, Kerrville, Lakey, Rock Springs. Anything that we do find is going to be very light, so impacts minimal to none. Maybe just a light glaze on some of those elevated surfaces like your car windshield street signs, things of that nature. But by midday, temperatures climb above 32 degrees in that area. So then we just transition to a cold liquid rain, which is what most of the area is going to be dealing with tomorrow. So by 3 p.m. near San Antonio, pointing farther off to the west, we've got more of that scattered rain in place. It increases in coverage and moves farther eastward late Sunday night and into early Monday morning. Notice by Monday morning drive time, it is looking to be a very soggy and messy start to the day here in San Antonio along and east of I-35. So you will want to plan on giving yourself some extra time at the door and definitely take the umbrella with you. Notice though, as we head into the midday hours, that's all going to work farther off to the east, but we're not finished with the rain chances. We're going to keep scattered chances in the forecast through at least the first half of next week there as well. In terms of rainfall totals, upwards of two inches possible here in San Antonio, a little bit drier the farther west that you go, higher totals the farther east. Until then, 30 degrees right now here in San San Antonio now above freezing in Castroville 31 in Hondo as we head into this afternoon. There are those increasing clouds that move in forecast high topping off around 45 degrees chilly tomorrow cloudy. Keep the umbrella handy there as well. Don't let it go into Monday, Tuesday and into Wednesday. Notice your temperatures a bit warmer next week. Lows in the 50s and highs in the 60s. We'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back. If you're an Apple or Verizon customer or if your kids play Fortnite, you could have money coming your way. Okay, it's all because of separate class action lawsuit settlements. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz says it's up to you, though, to claim your cash. If you've used Apple's family sharing perk, you could get a bite of a $25 million settlement. The lawsuit alleges Apple misled users about the non-Apple apps they could share. Apple denies it, but if you had a family sharing program between June 21st, 2015 and January 30th, 2019, you may be eligible to file a claim for up to $30. The deadline is March 1st. Hello, Verizon customers. You could pocket up to $100 because of a $100 hundred million dollar settlement. That lawsuit alleges Verizon deceptively charged administrative fees. Verizon denies it, but if you had a postpaid plan between January 1st, 2016 and November 8th, 2023 and paid the fees, you have until April 15th to file a claim. You can check the settlement website to see if you qualify. And here's a win for Fortnite gamers. Epic Games has agreed to pay $245 million after the FTC suit accusing the company of tricking people, including kids who are really into this game, into making unwanted purchases in the game. The deadline to apply for a refund is February 29th. So how do you file a claim? It's easy online and we have links on our website. Now remember Apple's battery gate? People who filed claims in that lawsuit are now receiving their $92. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. There you go, $130 coming your way. There we go. All right, time now, 922, 30 degrees. Today on a new episode of Texas Eats, look at that. David Elder gets grilling at a new burger spot in Lotus, serving up Heck yeah. loaded half-pound burgers on a rotating grill. I'm here for the half-pound burgers, not a smash burger guy. Quarter of a kilo is our brand. It means a quarter of a kilogram. So more than half a pound patties, made from scratch. It's all mesquite charcoal grill. And we have four burgers, big burger, massive, colossal burgers. Well, we also have a fifth patty, because you have like a secret menu item, right? Yeah, we have a secret menu, which is called the Bestia Burger, which is the bacon full of Bestia sauce, which is habanero, and three pepper jack cheese slices. That's for brave people that want to eat a very big burger. And we have an extra party because maybe you can do the challenge. <laughs> so right here we have the cheddar cheese and then we have the patty. We have all these setups ready to rock and roll back here. And then right on top, put that right on there, give it a little love. 
Oh, baby, look at that. We got a couple more of these to build out right now. Good morning, welcome back and happy Saturday. We were just talking about sitting outside, enjoying the South Texas weather. Don't do has, it today. Has not been a lot to enjoy recently, Mia. <laughs> it's been very cold this week. Honestly, we had a lot of ups and downs in terms of the temperature roller coaster. Of course, we had the Arctic air earlier this week. We got up to the 70s on Thursday, and then we had another front that moved in Thursday night, early Friday, then knocked us down to the 40s and 50s yesterday. Still chilly this weekend, and then we start to warm back up next week. So a lot of changes to talk about. I want to get you a look at the pollen count for today. Mountain cedar does drop from where it was yesterday, but it is still in the high category, so could be giving some folks some issues out there. Molds are present, but they are low at 490. All right, here's a look at temperatures across the area right now. Pleasanton, congratulations. You are now above freezing. Still 30 here in town, officially 29 in Converse, 31 in Port SA, 28 in Comfort, as well as Bernie, even stretching up by 10 to Kerrville, 31 the current temperature in New Braunfels. So yes, it is cold out there this morning, and all things considered, it's, it's going to be chilly into this afternoon. 40 degrees at noon, increasing clouds before the day is done. So high temperatures just topping off in the 40s for many of us in and around the San Antonio area. By the way, our average high for this time of year in the low 60s. So we're about 20 degrees below that. Still, at least we are above freezing. But we have even more changes that work in, not just in terms of temperatures, but in the form of rain chances. Tomorrow cold, we may struggle to climb out of the 30s. 30s because of the cloud cover and rain developing before the day is done. That turns widespread in coverage Sunday night and early Monday morning. So definitely make sure the umbrella is nearby by the back half of the weekend and even more so into the early portions of next week. Temperatures start to warm back up, but rain chances continue scattered in nature through at least Wednesday. So we're going to time it out and get you a full look at that forecast coming up in just a few. Thank you, Mia. It's a problem we talk about day in and day out. In fact, the local officials had a huge press conference about it, and it's only getting worse. Now it's involving a lot of juveniles as well. We're talking about property crimes locally. Thousands of dollars worth of stolen goods. Well, it happened during three separate break-ins, all within a 24-hour span. So it happened at the Smash and Crab Commissary. That's near De Zavala in I-10. Security video shows two men break the lock on a trailer. You can see it right there on your screen shortly after taking off with boxes of meat in a white pickup. They then returned with the black SUV, this time leaving with a second round of merchandise. And didn't stop there. Security footage showing the white pickup returning again and leaving with more boxes. It was just really hard to watch, just watching all of our stuff kind of go out the back door into a pickup truck. I mean, I, I hope you get caught and I hope you learn a lesson from this because it's not right. The commissary CEO says the stuff that was stolen cost them up to $20,000 in sales. Guilty. That is a verdict in the trial of Hilson Avalar Rodriguez. Now the jury announcing the decision just before four o'clock yesterday, Avalar Rodriguez, he was on trial for the 2018 murders of Nicholas Milanovic and Julia Wright. He told the jury that he did kill them, but only because his girlfriend threatened him to. Avalar Rodriguez will automatically be sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Now, this is a case we have been covering extensively. So we have all the details, ins and outs of court. Just head to ksat.com. Two San Antonio ISD officials, they've lost their jobs after heating problems at the district school. So San Antonio ISD Superintendent Jaime Aquino told staff in a memo that he accepted the resignations of Deputy Superintendent of Operations Ken Thompson and Chief of Operations Mike Eaton. In his memo, Aquino said, the district knows there is more than one cause to the heating problems and that it plans to examine the event and then publish a report. Though he also said it was an error on part of the leaders in the district, all the district's 98 schools have been out for the past two days. The teachers were able to get online to, through Classroom Dojo and they were able to have them let them know like, hey, they have this assignment, they can go on here, there's, there's a, they sent their links, resources, so that way they're not just sitting at home bored or just watching TV. A district news release stated the district is working around the clock to ensure schools will reopen on Monday. 
out of politics with the next big Republican test just three days away. Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley trying to make the most of the last weekend of campaigning up there in New Hampshire. Each hoping to make a dent in former President Donald Trump's lead. ABC's White House correspondent Mary Alice Parks has the latest from Manchester. We need a president like Donald Trump. On the campaign trail overnight, a Trump power move. South Carolina's Senator Tim Scott standing by his side. We have tremendous numbers of endorsements. They're pouring in right now. But having Tim is very important. It's an endorsement Nikki Haley had hoped for. Scott not only from her home state, but Haley first appointed him to the Senate. Now he's with Trump just three days before the New Hampshire primary where Haley has bet big and needs to deliver. Tim Scott wouldn't have a job without Nikki Haley. Nobody cares what Tim Scott th thinks. New Hampshire's Republican Governor Chris Sununu firing back. He's Haley's biggest cheerleader, taking the fight directly to Trump. We're tired of losers. We're tired of Donald Trump. But Haley piling else? on. He put us $8 trillion in debt in four years. Telling our Rachel Scott it's the right time to take him on. Should you have gone after Trump harder? I mean, from the very beginning, keep in mind, we had 14 people in the race at one time. Now that it's a two-person race, we're talking about the contrast. And Trump overnight saying this about Haley. She is not presidential timber. Now, when I say that, that probably means that she's not going to be chosen as a vice president. The fact is, this primary will likely be decided by independents like Dennis Kutcher, who make up 40 percent of New Hampshire voters. I think Nikki is the right person who should hopefully be able to bridge the divide. Iran says today that the nation has conducted a successful satellite launch into its highest orbit yet, the latest for a program the West fears improves to Ron's ballistic missiles. So the announcement comes as heightened tensions continue in the area. Whether that is Israel and Hamas, the United States and the Houthis and Houthis and the Iran, Iran itself engaged in conflict with Pakistan. Iran's state-run media saying the Soraya satellite was placed in orbit at some 460 miles above the Earth's surface with a three-stage rocket. The United States has pre previously said Iran's satellite launches defy a UN Security Council resolution and called on to run to undertake no activity involving ballistic missiles capable of delivering nuclear weapons. UN sanctions related to Iran's ballistic missile program expired last October. And sticking with your morning headlines, it's a story we've been talking about really for the last couple of weeks. The CDC warning respiratory illness is still very high and the highest activity in the South. Now, health officials, they're worried about a possible upswing that frequently follows the winter holidays. Since early December, flu has been causing more emergency room visits than COVID-19. One demographic where ER visits are going up among children 5 to 11 years old. Hospitalization rates, they're highest for seniors. More people under 50 are getting cancer. That's according to a new report by the American Cancer Society. The under age 50 group was the only adult demographic that saw an overall increase in cancer cases between 1995 and 2020. The report projects there will be about 2 million new cancer cases in the U.S. this year and about 600,000 cancer deaths. CDC expanding its warning about the risk of salmonella in charcuterie meat. There are now a total of 47 reported illnesses in 22 states linked to the Bassetto brand charcuterie sampler. The product, sold under different names like Fratelli, Beretta, Antipasto, sold at Sam's Club or at Costco, and there it actually went by a different name, Grand Beretta. Now, so far, there have been 10 hospitalizations linked to salmonella exposure, so if you have any of these products, throw them away immediately. Happening today, one business in Seguin wants to make sure you keep your mental health a top priority. Pecan Town Books and Brews on South Camp Street is hosting a mental health fair today. So a therapist, nutritionist, and chiropractor, they're going to be there answering questions about fighting depression and anxiety so you have a successful 2024. Now the event coordinator telling KSAT what inspired her to plan the event and why it is so important. I had horrible postpartum depression, and because of how awful it was, um, I needed help. And there wasn't a lot of uh, 
resources available to me. I didn't know where to go. I didn't know who to turn to. Because of that, I wanted to encourage people who needed it and just have a space where everything will be. That way we can send people out to the community where they need it. So the mental health fair is free, open to everyone, starts at 10 a.m., ends at 1 again. That address, 212 South Camp Street over in Seguin. We also have an article with more information about the event on our website, ksat.com. Let's check back in at Northside ISD Livestock Show today. Today is a kickoff. Their event is going to showcase hundreds of animals, of ag students that they've been taking care of for months with events going on every morning this week. Today we are looking at a lot of the machinery, a lot of welding. These projects are amazing. They spend a lot of time on them. And of course, a huge congratulations to all the students and families participating. Well, this is just a first look at what we can expect at the rodeo in just a few weeks. It's really just a good opportunity to get out there and show the world like what we can do um, and what we've done and how much hard work has gone into this and it's nice to be able to take it and show it off in a sense um, because it it did take a I spent over 900 hours on it all right and over two million dollars in scholarships was raised last year hopefully they can raise more this year congratulations to all of them of course time now 941 31 degrees well, some of us were turning pool water and snow into toilet water back mm. in 2021. A Canadian is using the cold weather to turn almost everything frozen. We'll take a look at that after the break. Have you seen these videos? Uh, some of them. My, they're, they're fantastic. It is terrifying because we just dealt with that cold snap, but they're using clothes that like stand up straight because it's so cold. Wow. I'm so excited to look at that video. But for now, taking a live look at the Alamo City, could warmer weather be on the way? Could we see rain? We're going to check in with Mia Montgomery in just a few moments. When it's 40 or 50 degrees below zero, you can't blame a guy for taking boiling water and blowing off a little steam, watching it instantly turn into snow and ice. But photographer Joe Chawanek of Alberta, Canada, got a kick out of seeing what other people did. How cold is it? Cold enough to use a banana to pound a nail. Cold enough to beat a frozen shirt like a drum. To turn jeans into a battering ram. So Joe decided to do his own game of, you froze your what off? The next one was the plate of ramen noodles. In 60 seconds, the boiled noodles were frozen stiff. And frozen in time. The Frozen in Time series, I guess I'm calling it. The next experiment involved placing an egg on a couple of straws and cracking it open. Forget hard boiled, we're talking frozen solid. My neighbors were looking out the window and thought I was crazy. And finally, there was something charming, make that charmin, about what the severe cold did to toilet paper. People should make the best of the conditions they're in. But don't try using it or you will truly freeze your butt off. In the immortal words of Annie Lennox, cool, cool, cool. Jeannie Mose, CNN, New York. I mean, that's- It's incredible. It's great because there's nothing else you can do. Right. Like you are making the best out of a bad situation. So they were in Alberta, Canada, and about how cold does it get there? I mean, it, it was well below freezing. Like, we're talking minus 20 plus. So how do their minus camera 30 plus? equipment, yeah. how does that even, like, work when it's that cold out? That's a great question. And the like guy was doing it without know. gloves. Yeah, the egg was my favorite part. They're also used to it up there. Like, here in Texas, we are not used to they're, even they're coming They're born close different. To that. No, born no, they different. definitely are a different breed up there. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Um, so, yes, this morning, very, very cold start. Not as cold as what we saw earlier this week when we had temperatures in the upper teens and a little bit of ice. Yep, yeah, not having to deal with that today, but it is going to be chilly as we head into this afternoon. Highs in the mid 40s, increasing cloud cover, still cold tomorrow. We may struggle to climb out of the 30s, yes, because of the cloud cover, but also conditions turn.
turning damp before the weekend is over, increasing rain chances throughout the day on Sunday, turning more widespread in coverage as we head into the Sunday night, Monday morning time frame. A few non severe thunderstorms possible, some pockets of heavy rain, especially by the Monday morning drive time. Rain chances don't stop there. We're going to keep them in the forecast generally throughout the first half of next week in a scattered nature. Also, warmer temperatures arrive as early as Monday. So let's talk about that. You can see we've got some cloud cover out there in the distance. This is going to be part of the cloud cover that increases across the south central Texas sky throughout the day. 30 degrees right now, still below freezing here in San Antonio, and it is a bit breezy. Winds out of the northeast at about 5 to 15 miles per hour, so feels like temperatures have dropped into the 20s for most early this morning. Definitely plan on layering up and bundling up if you're stepping out here over the next couple of hours. As we zoom this out and take a look at the Lone Star State, a lot of us still below freezing this hour, 22 in Dallas, 20 over in Abilene, 16 degrees the current temperature up there in Amarillo. A good chunk of the lower 48 still dealing with this colder air mass in place, minus 2 in Minneapolis, minus 8 closer to the Omaha, Nebraska area. It is warmer though across parts of the desert southwest and even closer to California, temperatures in the 50s. That's where there is some rain up and running this Saturday morning, even some snow as you get up into the higher elevations of the Rockies. All of this ahead of this area of low pressure. This is the disturbance that's going to be tracking eastward here over the next 36 hours. It approaches the state of Texas tomorrow and with little pockets of energy moving across the state ahead of that low pressure system, that's what's going to allow us to reintroduce those rain chances into the forecast as early as tomorrow. So here's a snapshot of your future cast. I think in between about 7 to 9 o'clock in the morning, a few sprinkles possible here in San Antonio, maybe where temperatures are closer to freezing up into the hill country near Bandera, Kerrville, Lake Lakey Rock Springs can't completely rule out some light freezing rain impacts minimal to none here because it is going to be light and the window is so short, but maybe a light glaze on some of those elevated surfaces. But you can see by midday as those temperatures climb above freezing in the hill country, that's going to transition to just cold liquid rain. And that's what most of us here in South Central Texas will be dealing with tomorrow. You can see by 6 p.m. some of that scattered rain across the central portions of the area. The radar is going to continue to fill in though as we head into Sunday night, overnight, early Monday morning. Definitely keep the umbrella handy tomorrow and by Monday morning drive time. Plan for a messy and soggy commute. Give yourself some extra time out the door and take the rain gear with you. That's going to work eastward as we head into Monday afternoon. A 60% chance though into Tuesday and then a 40% chance as we head into your Wednesday. So Something we'll continue to monitor overall upwards of about two inches of rain possible closer to San Antonio. But of course, we'll keep you posted on that as we get a little bit closer. Until then, chilly today, cold tomorrow, rain chances into next week, warmer temperatures next week as well. Low temperatures climbing into the 50s and highs in the 60s. We'll be right back. If you're feeling overwhelmed with work and like you have, feel like you have nothing left, to give, you may be headed for or already experiencing burnout. All right, so this was a big problem, especially during the pandemic. Right. Now that people are getting back to work, at least back in the office, some people are experiencing burnout in a new way. ABC's Ike Jachi explains some of the symptoms and what you can do about it. Burnout is really a state of anxiety, and very often people reach this point and they're not sure how they got there. Psychiatrist Dr. Dion Metzger says many of her patients' number one stressor is burnout from work. Signs of burnout can include changes in sleep, heaviness in your chest, irritability at home, and inability to clock out of work mentally. If you are going home from work and you find yourself just thinking about the projects that you have coming up or an interaction you had with a coworker, where when you're home, you're still bringing work to home, that's usually a sign that we're, we're getting pretty stressed out when it's starting to kind of go over that boundary. Dr. Metzger likens burnout to a car's gas tank. That's easier to refuel before you hit E than waiting until you completely run out of gas and have to completely recover from burnout. If you're experiencing symptoms of burnout, Dr. Metzger recommends taking a mental health day. That means no errands and no doctor's appointments. Doing whatever brings you joy and rest. Joy and rest. Because there's things that we can enjoy, but it's not exactly restful. I love to watch movies and watch TV and binge watch, you know, sitcoms. For some people, it might be painting. Some people, it's like going, taking a hike and doing things outside in nature. 
Make sure your day has a break in it. You'll be surprised how many patients I ask, like, like, how long is your lunch break? And they'll say, oh, I'm eating for five minutes between doing this project and doing this project. But no, like a for real lunch break. Like, let's bring those back into fashion. And communicate with your boss. Sometimes it's our reflex always be like, yeah, I can do that. I'm sure. Anytime. Yeah, I'm on it. But, you know, it's okay to push back and be like, you know what? I don't think I'm going to get to that this week. Solutions like working from home for a day, shifting your hours earlier to avoid traffic, or spreading projects out more evenly throughout the month can make a big difference. Aika Jachi, ABC News, Washington.